All right, let me get uh, an expert on press conferences. Uh, <laughs> And that is Tim May of the Dispatch. You just heard Stan. I, I, I think he had to absolutely come out and say something. Um, what say you, Tim? Uh, the press conference was interesting, to say the least. But I, I felt like at some point, I, in fact, I wish he'd have been out there longer, quite honestly. I wish you guys had gotten the report before the press conference started because yeah. that would have generated a whole new set of questions. But what was your overall takeaway, uh, Tim May, of what you saw last night? Yeah, I mean, we were just we were feverishly just trying to read the little short version they gave us. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like you're flipping around, flipping around. You finally get to the part that matters whether he's suspended or not. I'm talking about you know the rulings and stuff back page. But uh, no, yeah, man, I'm, I'm on record saying this a long time ago. I mean, you know, the more the more access, the better. So I'm not going to knock Ohio State for for putting Urban Meyer out there, Gene Smith, and. Uh, and uh, Michael Drake, you know, and then past that, you know, people will judge the press conference uh, as they will judge it, much like a beauty contest. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and, you know, you do have to say this, so rare, rarely has Ohio State uh, won the press conference, you know, <laughs> walked away. I just keep thinking back to that 2011 one with Jim Trussell, uh, Gene Smith, and Gordon Gee. And, uh, as, uh, you know, a year later, how many people were left in that picture? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, you never know. You never know what's coming down the road. But I would much rather have access and not have access. I'm not going to ever say Urban Meyer shouldn't have been there or not. But then, you know, it's kind of up up to Urban Meyer to answer questions as he sees fit. And uh, and there was a there did seem to be um, there did seem to be a situation where he looked quite distracted uh, in his own thoughts. And where questions had to be repeated, sometimes with me that's a good thing because. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is, uh, yeah, he he. Is, is, as I said on another show earlier today, I don't think they went down the. Uh, I don't think they went down the street after that was over and had wings together. All the, all three of those guys, that's for sure. No, he looked angry to me. Did he look angry to you, Tim? He looked uh, sullen. Uh, was the word I would use, and uh, you know, and you know, you go into one. You go into a situation with your own perspective on it. I'm talking about him. Michael Drake clearly went into that uh, meeting starting at 9, 9.30 with another perspective. And then you add to that the discussions that went on. You know, we understand Urban Meyer might have been in there, might have been in the building for four or five hours without ever even appearing before the Board of Trustees. You know, how accurate that was, who knows. But the bottom line is, you know, clearly – it looked like almost all three si- all three guys at that press conference didn't get what they expected to get, or uh, you know, and uh, so we'll see where it goes. But you know, it's kind of hard to hard to explain those things. Uh, all you can do is kind of judge people's demeanor and stuff and how they answer questions. And so I'll just kind of leave it at that. I mean, Michael Drake kind of passed on my question about well, if if Gene Smith knew, that meant Urban Meyer's superior knew about 2015. And I was basically asking, so what's he supposed to do after that? And Michael Drake indicated he didn't understand my question, and Gene jumped in there quickly to answer it. So, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, Tim, so, you, you, as I'd like to say at that point, no comment. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, uh, on Twitter, you, we got a question from Patrick. Uh, Ask Tim May if he believes there will be an eventual firing of Coach Meyer because of constant negative media coverage. Hell, I mean – I shouldn't have said hell. Heck, I don't know. I mean, who, 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 I don't even know what that question means. I mean, you know, there's been – there's obviously Ohio State is PR-oriented. They want to put the best foot forward uh, in all kinds of ways. And when it doesn't happen, usually things happen. But, man, I, you know, you know, you're not going to – no matter what your – no matter what your take is on how the investigation went down, uh, how the domestic – abuse allegations were handled and I uh, keep reminding people they were handled first by a uh, law enforcement agency the Powell Police Department uh, with no arrest or charges made I'm talking about just the 2015 thing you know wow you know people are making up their minds no matter what sort of the facts say one way or the other uh, Tim after you looked at the report which unfortunately, everybody got after the press conference. Um, 
what popped out at you? Because there there were several things. I mean, the text message things, was it, um, you know, some of the dalliances that went on with Zach Smith, but is there any one thing that you were like, wow, that is uh, really informative and pretty damning? Well, the dalliance, dalliance things didn't really, I mean, you know, you kind of had, kind of had wind of that, obviously. Uh, the uh, Urban Meyer wanting to know how to, how to whitewash his, uh, his cell phone text messaging, which you know, has been pointed out to me on various other interviews I've done today uh, across the nation. Uh, uh, the, you know, that's a, that's a, a school owned uh, or athletic department owned cell phone. He doesn't have the right to necessarily do that. You know, I don't know what his right is or not, <laughs> you know, as I like to say, companies uh, have shredding parties every, you know, almost every day or every week. I mean, based on whatever. So, you know, who knows? I mean, I don't even know how to answer that question. Yeah, you would like to have gotten you would like to have gotten his text message history from that time. I've asked for his email message history uh from two thousand and fifteen in that area regarding uh Zach Smith and Gene Smith uh, Jack, uh, yeah, Zach Smith and Gene Smith have yet to get that from the university from a freedom of information situation. But uh you know, uh, that kind of popped out and uh, and of course the the uh, thing I think Bill Rabinowitz is writing about for tomorrow, you know, as most people will be, is the uh, the, the strip club party in um, uh, in 2014 where Zach Smith spent 600 bucks, and uh, and the reaction that Urban Meyer had to that, but also the indication there was another Ohio State coach there with him, mm-hmm. along with maybe some high school coaches. That's an interesting situation that you know I don't. I don't know what the statute of limitations are from the standpoint of whether or not Ohio State could face NCAA jeopardy if, in fact, there was an NCAA violation there. But uh, that would be probably the most interesting going forward. Uh, Visiting with Tim May of the Columbus Dispatch, talking about uh, what went down yesterday. and You know, we've been waiting for that moment to come in this thing where we can move forward. And, uh, Tim, I, I'm not sure that we're there yet. Um, you know, we've got the the three-game suspension. We have now the report, which has brought up uh, a bunch of other questions. I, I'm just wondering, is this the beginning of the end uh, in terms of this story and it's going to eventually, as the season goes on, be a blip on the radar? Or is this just um, – part of an ongoing story that is can continue to hang over Ohio state for a long time. This is never going to be a blip on the radar. This is a, uh, you know, a B 52, uh, fully fledged with its flaps down coming at the radar, you know, in, in that respect, as opposed to a, a B two stealth bomber. So, you know, you're the one that had the, uh, radar analogy. I just carried out the fake there. As gotcha. Mark Harmon would do. Yes. But, uh, but the bottom line is, you know, you know, who knows when anything's ever behind you. You know, what I am, my consternation right now, and I've voiced it to the upper, you know, the upper management, wherever you want to call it, the communications department at Ohio State for the second or third time is I would like to speak to Ryan Day. Yes. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, and we haven't had that opportunity yet. Doesn't look like we're going to get it today unless it's a hastily called 20 minutes get here thing. But, uh, I would like to speak to Ryan Day. He's now the head coach for at least the first three games. He's been on the job for more than three weeks as the acting head coach. Uh, as I like to say, he's almost 40. He's a man. He can handle it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, paraphrasing, of course, our fellow down at Oklahoma State. But, uh, but the bottom line is that's, that's what I would like. I mean, not that you ever totally move away from what, what, what got you here in the first place, but there is a football season coming. Uh, they are practicing. There are, are other sides of this other than, you know, outrage uh, at whatever, you know. I mean, Urban Meyer's paying a three-game penalty from a standpoint of suspension. He's not getting paid for the next two weeks. Uh, that's a significant chunk. Uh, for me, it would be a very significant chunk based on my rate of pay. For him, <laughs> it's a significant chunk based on the amount. Yeah. Uh, but the bottom line is, and in, uh, you know, Gene Smith is on suspension without pay, uh, what, starting August the 28th or whatever it is, for a week or so or two weeks. So, you know, those are significant penalties when you pile on the fact that Urban Meyer's been on paid administrative leave since August the 1st. But, my, you know, who knows what we'll find as, as this goes on, but the bottom line is there also is a season coming no matter what. Kind of reminds me when we were 
chasing the whole, whole Maurice Claret up oh, yeah. in 2003 preseason. That was that was the preseason from hell. Yeah. Uh, from a football standpoint, speaking of that, uh, so Coach Meyer is out for the first three games. Uh, you know that third game, TCU in Arlington. Um, does that put that game in more jeopardy in your mind? And does this – does this, you know, he can coach during the week, but can't coach uh, on Saturday. You wonder the distraction of all that, Tim, how this might affect this football team. <laughs> One of, part of my story for tomorrow that I've got coming, uh, part of it is the fact that Ohio State's odds for winning those first three games actually went up, not down. Interesting. <laughs> and also – their odds for winning the Big Ten. I'm just talking about a marginal way, but they did go up, not down. You know, I'm not really into gambling, but gambling, but the the odds do show sort of the sentiment out there. Their odds for winning the Big Ten East and the Big Ten Championship went up, not down. Uh, so, uh, you know, hmm. we always know, and, you know, Stan can answer this as well as anybody, teams are always looking to add chips on their shoulder when they can find them. And, you would think that this is a major chip on the shoulder of Ohio State football players one way or the other because whatever they think of Urban Meyer, you know, their whole – their program has been called into question and uh, et cetera. And I, know, I know this probably been hammered home to them repeatedly during the preseason. From what I'm hearing, Ryan Day is doing an excellent job mm-hmm. as the, uh, the acting head coach, and he's got two former head coaches there uh, in Greg Schiano and Kevin Wilson and, uh, you know, one of the more talented coaching staffs in America. I mean, we think about, uh, you know, Larry Johnson, et cetera. So uh, I think uh, they will be on the beam, so to speak. Uh, and it's it's funny what can get a team going, and this is a team already being praised as being one of the top three, top five teams in the country in the preseason polls, and now they have even more to uh, prove. So yeah, uh, I would think it helps them from a focus standpoint. Uh, Tim, last thing for you, and uh, opinion question: uh, When Wait, Coach... let me let me let me let me finish that though, because I always you know being uh, sixty four and a half now, I forget sometimes what the original question was. Yeah, but bottom line is though, the, one of the more talented coaches in college football history in in terms of winning games will not be on the sideline though for three games. There's no way that helps you. Okay. Right. It may not hurt you, but there's no way that helps you not having uh, one of the top two, maybe three contemporary coaches uh, on the sidelines. So there you go. Now, yeah. next uh, question, please. Uh, the, yeah, last thing I want to ask is ju- and just your opinion uh, on how you expect Urban to handle this. Is he going to take any more questions about this now that we've all digested this report you know, next time game week for, you know, whatever, Tulane he comes out? Or is he going to stiff arm it and say, you know, I, I addressed that back then and I, I'm not going there. What do you think happens going forward? Because there's a whole lot of new questions that we all have after looking at this report. A man in, in the United States of America has the right to say, uh, uh, I don't want to answer that or, you know, next question. So he has the right to do that. that that does not mean we will not be asking questions, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so who knows how he will react in that regard. You know, he is, uh, I think, promised to be forthcoming. Uh, maybe last night was his was, – well, he'll feel that that was his moment to be, to be dealing with this. Uh, but obviously, uh, us in the media will still have questions. There's no denying that, you know. Just like there's no denying that when uh, Ryan Day has ever put before us, uh, there will be questions about how, you know, what he knew, how he's handled things. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the way he answers things, the, 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 the subject will always move forward, of, you know, one way or the other. And uh, so that's me, man, be pambying, uh, dancing around your quick because I have no idea what Urban Meyer is going to and, do. And I don't need, uh, if uh, that were asked of me, I would have answered the same way, Tim. I have no idea, but uh, it'll be interesting to see, and we'll be asking the you questions. Should have just asked yourself, you should have I, I should have. And You're right. Saved another one for me. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right, Tim. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, I appreciate it, and uh, enjoy. Uh, I don't know if you have any time off, but after spending 14 hours at the Longerberger House yesterday, probably deserve a day of rest, but... Uh, 
Yeah, but I mean, just watching uh, being asked being asked to move off the uh, loading dock area by Urban's car. So I mean, it was actually well worth the experience. <laughs> but it did get old after about the fifth hour. I'm sure it did. Did you at least get some pizza? Hey, I got to give it up to him on this. No, I'm not. I'm not a big uh, catered in food eating guy. Ever since I got, uh, as I said on another radio show, ever since I got food poisoning from uh, eating uh, turkey at a pre uh, Michigan game press conference <laughs> in Michigan. But uh, but but then past that. Uh, uh, I got to give it up to them. They did settle. They did. You know, we understood there was a lot of angst in that room, uh, or uh, give and take, whatever you want to call it, uh, in that uh, board of trustees meeting with the Michael Drake and stuff as this was being gone over yesterday. And I got to give it up to them for getting getting a decision made, having Urban Meyer, in essence, I guess, sign off on it. You know, yeah. And uh, having and finally getting that resolved that day because trudging back there again today to wait for the smoke to come out of the chimney would not have been fun no no question about that tim thanks so much appreciate it uh read hey, his always stuff. A pleasure next time next time let's stay and ask a question okay